Hello, this is Dr. J from Rockwell Labs, research entomologist, and today I wanted to talk to you about the Fomer Simpson. I want to go over a few things with you, unboxing the Fomer Simpson, uh, details about the Fomer Simpson, cleaning the Fomer Simpson, and making sure you are able to maintain it so that it works at its highest efficiency. So, when you get the Fomer Simpson, it comes fully assembled, everything included. Uh, your hose, your tank, Everything's included. We also have an additional white foam insert, uh, which I'll go over in a little while. But the first thing you want to do when you get your foamer Simpson is you want to take the oil that's contained in there, and this is just any standard oil will do, a vegetable oil, um, and you can place a few drops of the oil down into the pump housing. Now that's going to keep that pump lubricated and make sure you're able to maintain uh, your pumping distance. Another additional thing you can do once you have this unboxed is to take out the pump and place a few drops of oil around the green o-ring that's present. And that will also help to seal and lubricate uh, the Fomer Simpson. And also it'll keep that seal uh, nice and lubricated so that it won't dry out over time. And that's your initial steps for your Fomer Simpson. When you fill your Fomer Simpson with Biofoam or our Outlast Pro Foam, one thing to remember is that you need to fill the Fomer Simpson only to about the one gallon or one and a half gallon level. Now this allows for a lot of headspace for air. While you're foaming, you're mixing water and air together uh, to come out as a foam. So it's very, very important that you do not fill this all the way up with water or you're gonna be pumping all day long. So, I already have one gallon of water inside the foamer. You will apply biofoam at four ounces per gallon. Now another very important factor with your Fomer Simpson is to remember never to shake the tank. If you shake the tank, you're going to get suds bubbling up in there and what happens is that those suds are going to block the intake and you will not get foam out. If that happens, you'll have to actually dump out the foam, dump out the water, rinse it out and then start again. So what you really want to do is you want to gently swirl the mixture until you look inside and you can actually see that it is well mixed. The only thing to remember is to maintain adequate pressure. So with these foamers, again, your airspace is the most important thing. The more airspace you have, the more foam you can put out. But as the pressure goes down in the foam, one thing you want to remember is that your pressure is, your air pressure is probably going down. And that's why your foam output has been slowed down. It's very important to actually maintain and clean uh, your foam or Simpson once a week, once every other time you use it. Uh, basically, you're looking to prevent things from getting too far and from having a complete failure of the product. Uh, due to your due to not cleaning it and I want to show you one of the main things that you're going to have to clean on the Fomer Simpson inside of this headpiece so attached here inside this headpiece there is a white foam insert now as you can see this foam insert is actually no longer white it's brown, it's yellow, it's, and it has a few pieces of plastic, dirt, and other things and debris uh, that have been sucked up into the hose. Either when filling the tank, uh, something got into the tank and got sucked up through the hose, uh, or, or otherwise. Uh, so this comes with a brand new filter. There's a filter included inside 
the foam insert included inside the original handle, but there's also an additional one for your first cleaning job. This is something that you might want to also think about purchasing additional pieces uh, when you initially purchase your foamer Simpson. But this actually is not too dirty to be cleaned. You can actually take this, soak it in some warm water, rinse it out, clean it out, run it under some warm water as well, and then reinsert it into, into your sprayer end and reattach it to your hose. One of the other things that you need to do is to clean out the tank fairly frequently. One thing you don't want to let happen is to let a soapy solution stay inside that tank for any extended periods of time. If you're not using it the next day, go ahead and dump out your solution and rinse out the tank. So you want to rinse out the tank with slightly warm water. And if you're actually mixing a, a pesticide in this tank and you're using maybe our Outlast Pro Foam mixed with the pesticide, uh, you would want to maybe use a, a tank neutralizer or some other pesticide cleaner inside that tank and rinse it thoroughly. Also put a little a gallon of water in here and pump it through so that you're pumping out uh, through the hose, through the sprayer, cleaning out everything on a fairly frequent basis. Don't forget to depressurize the tank. Now if you want to have a bunch of foam spray out in the back of your truck, one thing to do is forget to do that. Um, so all you have to really do is turn that one click and you'll hear it depressurize. Turn it back and you're ready to go the next time. Here in front of me I have basically all the parts in the Fomer Simpson disassembled so I can show you uh, some some extreme maintenance that you may have to do or some more detailed maintenance that you may have to do on the Fomer Simpson as you use it over time. Now one of the very first issues that you may face is that you lose pressure or you can't hold pressure or when you pump nothing happens. So when that happens the first thing to do is to look at the end of your piston and see if this check valve has fallen off. Now if you use specific pesticides and those pesticides break down this seal, there's a chance that it can either become hard and not function properly or become brittle and fall off the end. Um, so if you do feel that you don't have pressure, look down in the bottom of the tank to see if that, if that relief valve has come off and is sitting in the bottom of that tank. These parts are available to purchase also. Now with a handle assembly, there's generally not too much that can go wrong with a handle assembly, but occasionally it does get a little gunk build up, especially if you're not cleaning out your Fomer Simpson as frequently as you should be. Um, so basically what you want to do with this is to run some warm water through it while pressing on the handle. And that will open up the valve and you'll, try to, you'll be able to flush out anything that's inside that handle. Um, the same thing goes for the extension wand and for the actual uh, fan tip sprayer. You really want to just pull that insert out, soak that insert in some hot water for a little while just to loosen it up, loosen up all those particles and then run warm water over there. Um, the same with the tube, run some warm water through there. Uh, generally warm water is about all you have to do to clean most things. Occasionally you may have to, to use a brush or something like that to clean out the Fomer Simpson, but that's usually a more rare case. Uh, so I wanted to show you one of these things. Uh, this is, uh, when I was a PCO, I carried uh, this particular set of equipment around with me uh, every day. And this is a carburetor cleaning tool. It has a bunch of little different size, uh, basically picks on the end for cleaning out a carburetor on a you know, lawnmower or other vehicle, uh, but they're perfect size for cleaning out all the little holes and nooks and crannies on most of your equipment. And also, there are a set of small brushes. Uh, you can get brushes that are for uh, cleaning out airbrushes or anything like that, and that will help you, you know, to clean out those little tiny uh, crevices that you can find. Um, also, you can use a paper clip 
uh, to clean out most of the most of the things that I'll be talking about in this next segment. Another issue you might run into with your Foamer Simpson is if you're pumping it up and you're squeezing the trigger and mostly liquid comes out. Now if that happens, you probably have a clog in the red terminus on your intake hose. Uh, so remove the intake hose and you'll see the red terminus. There are two small holes on either side of this plastic piece. Now I'm just using my carburetor cleaner tool and I'm punching out those holes, uh, cleaning out the interior of those holes. Now once you put this assembly back together it should foam just fine. Now if something else is wrong with the foamer and it doesn't foam correctly you may want to check your uh, your pressure relief valve. Sometimes these pressure release valves can stay in a half cock position and that makes you lose pressure and without that pressure again you're going to have basically liquid coming out of the end of the foamer Simpson. Once again thank you for joining us today and I hope you enjoyed this episode of Rockwell Tech Tips and go out and purchase the foamer Simpson you'll never regret the results that you'll gain.